a cool tier two skins by the way. But I do like the Metal Carnage the best. Uh, although the Halloween one's pretty cool when he goes the horror. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the Fenrir guide. Um, now, honestly, I think Fenrir is a really fucking good character in a lot of ways. I actually love this fucking character. Um, I I don't I don't know if uh. I, I don't know. I, I, I like him a lot, especially in the solo lane. He's really fun to play. And uh, I think he's actually really, really strong as well. Um, so, Fenner as a character has a lot of fucking mobility as an assassin. Um, you know, and this ability fucking swings. 165 per hit is pretty fucking strong. Um, you know, especially considering the fact that this hits. What, four times? Yeah, I think Nike's is like 195 and it hits two to three times, you know. But, yeah, of course it can be canceled out. Um, this gives you bonus power and lifesteal. Um, and then this does a lot of fucking damage on a leap. And then he has an ult, which uh, can displace people. Now, I think uh, Fender's actually a really, really strong soul laner and uh, jungler as well because... The great thing about Fenner is you can build him kind of however you want, really. Or, or not really, but, you know. Um, he's really strong no matter how you build him. Uh, it just depends on how you're going to play him to his strengths. Um, so, honestly, if you're playing... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Do, 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 do. Yoink. Um, if you're playing solo Fenner, I'd recommend going Death Soul. Um... Over Bluestone, you can go Bluestone, but it's a little bit dangerous considering if you hit, like, if you hit them with your leap, then all the creeps are going to aggro onto you, you're not going to have any, um, healing you're getting, because, unless you howl, which you won't get till level 3, level 4, um, you know, so, you're really not going to get any lifesteal, right, um, you're really going to be relying on potions to keep you alive from all of the archers and all the melees hitting you. Because bluestone, once it hits, it lasts, like, forever. Like, because it's 30 damage over 2 seconds. So that's 2 full seconds you're tanking all of the archers and all the melees. You're taking a lot of fucking damage. <laughs> you're going to do a lot of damage, yes, but you're probably going to get obliterated by the archers. Um, so I recommend Death Toll. You know, it gives you the extra 100 health, and it gives you still a good amount of physical power. And, uh, you know, of course, the passive on it, where you get health and mana back from auto attacks. Yoink. Yoink. Oh, I'm not damaged, so I don't get anything. Um, but yeah. So, if you're doing solo Fenrir, I'd start Death Soul. Um, jungle Fenrir, I'd say Bluestone. Um, most of the time, if you're doing jungle, you kind of want bluestone uh because bumbas is where you're going to be getting a lot more of your health back because you can just leap in and kill the camp and then you'll have a lot more health sort of thing uh also add on the fact that as a jungler you want to just lay down as much damage and get the fuck out um jump in do a shitload of damage get the fuck out um and you're not really going to be fucking around in the wave too much, so, you know. And if you are fucking around in the wave, you're going to have somebody there with you, usually like the mid laner and or the support sort of thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, I would say almost always start jump. Um, oops. Fuck. I don't want to do that because I don't want this to get in the way. Blech. Whatever. Um, I'd say almost always start jump. You know? Uh, jump. You know. Again, 95 damage. At level 1, 95 damage is like fucking 90% of somebody's health. Nah, it's like a fifth. But it is a good bit, you know? If I have death toll, I have 600. So. It, it, you know. It still is a lot of damage. Um, so. You can really fucking nuke somebody with that. Um, it'll clear the creeps pretty easily. Then when you hit level 2, you're going to want to pick up your 3, your Brutalize. Um, you know, keep an eye on the runes because this will stun for a second, which is really, really good. Because you can just hit them, 
Group all the creeps together. Jump. Stun them if they try and attack you. And then you can just brutalize them. Um. Uh, I'd say nine, or, mm, not even nine, just, just 100% of the time. Just get Warrior Tabby. Warrior Tabby's, like, so fucking good on Fenrir. More damage onto the Leap, more damage onto the Brutalize, just more damage. Like, amazing character. Um, now, as Fenrir, the reason I, I like to play him solo so much is, you know, I, you can build him as a fucking tank. You can make him a bruiser because he already has a lot of damage built into his kit uh, from Brutalize, from the Leap, from the Howl, which literally just gives you power and lifesteal. You know, I can make a big impact on these team fights. Um, I can, you know, stun people, I can displace people, and I can still lay down a lot of damage. Um, and if I get, you know, 30% CDR, 40% CDR, then, you know, I'll be able to constantly use this. This is going to be, again, like a five point, what? I think it halves it. Yeah. The cooldown is halved if you leap on somebody. So this is going to be like a 5.25 CDR. Like, meaning I can leap. Like, ugh. I can leap on somebody. Fuck, that was really bad. Brutalize. I can just keep going. Because back up. Yeah. And again, pay attention to your runes. Like, if I was trying to get the stun there again, I'd just auto attack one more time before it. Um, you know, most of the time, uh, using the stun is really, really good. And maybe that's just because I play him more as a bruiser. That I want the stun as opposed to the extra damage from, you know, the Seething Howl or from the Brutalize. You know, um, and yeah. So, so as to, um, what to get at level three. It kind of depends. It depends on where you're playing him. It depends on what you're playing against. If you're playing against something like a new WA where she can just use the fog and just immune or uh, just cancel out your brutalize, or if um, you know you're playing against a an Odin or something, somebody that can leap or silence or cancel out your brutalize in in almost any way, there's no real reason to level brutalize over leap. Because when this does 300 and whatever damage, it's going to really lay it down. Like, you know, you can just leap in. And then just brutalize. A lot of damage. Um, however, if if you're playing solo against somebody like, oh, I don't know, like a Guan or something. Um, then, you know, leveling brutalize wouldn't be the worst idea. It depends on how much pressure you have in the lane, you know, um, and you'd have to stack up your five stacks and then, uh, you could definitely do something like this, where you group up the mains and then just hit all of them with the brutalize. Oh, rip. Um, level five, I'd say almost always get the ult. Uh, Ragnarok's such a strong ultimate, so I'd say almost always get it um, at level 5. Uh, running Fenner with a comp such like uh, an Athena or, I don't know, a Hunbat, something that could really burn beads is really, really effective. Because, you know, uh, when Fenner just leaps in, stuns, auto attacks, ah oh, shit, fuck that up anyway um the fact they can just leap stun and then pick them up and take them to wherever he wants is a really big um you know displacement it's kind of like hercules is where you can just take somebody from way over there and move them way over here you know and that's why playing him solo works really well because if you haven't already gotten a kill before you hit level five you can you know force them off the wave because if they walk up to like midway all you have to do is just leap on the front ones and him pick them up and take them into your tower and then you just body block and then you can fall them out of the tower with your brutalize again it depends on who you're playing as to when you want to use the brutalize and 
you know, how you want to play against it. But, yeah. You know, and that's why I love Fenrir so much, is because he's such a situational character that, you know, if I'm playing against somebody with a leap, um, it depends on how I want to position myself and how I want to use my abilities, right? You know, if, uh, if I have all my runes stacked up and they know it, you know, then maybe I just want to keep auto-attacking them and, and bait out their leap. Because, really, if I'm playing against Odin, and he's just going to wait for my leap, then, you know, I could just brutalize his creeps, and I could still have my leap for later, you know? Um, and then if he leaps, I could just leap right on top. Also, this is one of the coolest skins, because the leap is the coolest. Is that little spin in the air. Um, anyway. <laughs> um... Another great thing about Fenner is later on in the game, he becomes more of an auto attack based character than an ability based character. Don't get me wrong, you know, this is still going to swing for 330 whatever, right? 335 plus your uh, scaling. And the Seething Hell is still going to give you a great benefit as to all of your, you know, your brutalize and whatever. Because, you know, if you, you come in with five stacks, you can leap, auto attack Hell, auto attack, and then just brutalize. And because they have all, uh, all such a low like post hit delay, it's literally like right after you leap, you just instantly get another auto attack in. So you can just hold down left click. And it just automatically, even with even with Ragnarok, you can just boom. Instantly get that extra hit. So, you know. Um... Items like Hydra's Lament aren't the worst on him, considering, you know, he always is going to get that extra hit in. Where, you know, you leap, boom. Always get it, right? Um, that is if you're playing him jungle anyway. Um, as far as my build goes, uh, I tend to like to go into Frostbound, Wingblade, and then sell this out for a situational item. Like a Bulwark, Pestilence, you know, um maybe a mid guardian it, de it depends on the team you're fighting against and you know who's really laying it down um frostbound again it you know i can stun you i can slow you down you know the the fact that post it i'm always getting it sort of thing you know slows you down more uh wing blade giving me more attack speeds so that i can you know um get more auto attacks off meaning you know more frostbound procs again if they have a lot of healing you can go to witchblade um you know but definitely wing blade's really really strong you know they really can't escape you then because you have pretty much two leaps a ult that makes you move faster and then uh, now you're immune to slows as well as well as you have an extra 10 percent movement speed and uh movement speed and attack speed reduction um you know uh, Midgardian and Frostbound don't exactly work too great together, considering the, um, you know, they kind of cancel each other out, because the, um, the basic attack penalty doesn't stack, and I don't think the movement speed slow stacks either, uh, but it's, what, 30% on each of that, and then, yeah, this is 30% and 15%, so, um, if they do activate this, this will take over and they'll lose an extra 15% of their attack speed. But usually you kind of just want to stick to Frostbound. Oops, what did I do? <laughs> um, usually you kind of just want to stick to Frostbound. Um, like one or the other sort of thing. Um, but yeah. So, you know. Fenner, I have... Oh shit, I'm only level 5, rip. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. Do 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 Alright. So once again, you know, it kind of depends on what you're against, but if you're against anything, it can really cancel out your Brutalize. Like, for example, Ra really can't cancel out my Brutalize in any way. So, I can level Brutalize from him against Ra. I have five stacks, just sleep in, brutalize, and he can't do anything about it, sort of thing. Um, you know, 
Okay, I didn't even chase me. Wimpy bots. Anyway. Um, I would say level the one that you didn't level. So either level your one or your three first. Depending on, again, what you're against. If they can cancel out your Brutalize, don't level the Brutalize. But, yeah. Um, then level your other one. So let's say they can. Then I'll level my one. Then level your three. Then level the two. Because you want the bonus damage and bonus lifesteal. And then your uh, your ult is really mainly just for the displacement. But, uh, you know, because... Oh, shit. I don't care. I'll just get this. doesn't matter. Um, your ult's mainly for the displacement, but it can swing really hard. So, like, 500 damage is nothing, <laughs> nothing to joke about, you know? You can just leap in. And then just put them down. Keep auto-attacking, you know? Um... Again, I'm hitting for like, what, 125 at hit? And I have mostly defense. You know, I'm almost 3,000 health with almost 200 protections. Again, you know, uh, and you're going to have, god damn it, you're going to have a guardian that pretty much has all the ore items, which will give you another, what, uh, psh, that's 20, I think this is, oh, what'd they do with that one? This one should also be 20, or no, it's 15 because they nerfed it. And then this is also 15. So an extra 30, 35, you know. Um, so yeah, you're pretty much going to end up with 200 something, 200 something before their penetration. Um, and then almost 3,000 health. So you're going to be really tanky and swinging pretty hard. Um, you know, again, this is what? 325? And each of these are 166, and that's before my seeding hell, you know, which will again bo uh, boost my damage and my uh, life steal. Yeah, 195. It's almost 200 to swing. Um, and against really squishy characters like a raw or some sort of mid laner, they're gonna get fucking obliterated by that. Um, so you know. This is typical solo build. Um, you can build, again, you know, you can always build the Mystical Mail on him. Uh, be careful with it, though, because, again, you can get bullied really hard uh, if you end up behind. Uh, Fenner ahead is really, really scary. Fenner behind is pretty much useless. Um, Gladiator Shield's not great on him. It's just... Uh, it's just, eh. like, it's it's not great. I'm not a huge fan of Gladiator Shield in the first place. Um, and his cooldowns are way too long as it begins. Um, as far as a jungle build, um, there's a lot of different ways you can go. Um, you can start off with... Do-do-do, do-do-do... God damn it. Again, Bumba's Bluestone. Going to Warrior Tabby like always. Um, you know. Uh, getting something like Jotun's is strong. Er, sorry. I want to get Hydra's first, then Jotun's. Um, from there, uh, it kind of depends on what kind of a build you want. You know, do you want more of a attack speed based build? You know, you can go into something like Executioner. You know, wouldn't be a great or wouldn't be a, a terrible idea. Um, if you're looking to get a little bit more tanky or and and you want some more damage, you can always go Shifters. Um, you know, honestly, almost any of these items will work great right on him. Uh, don't build crit, Fenner. Just don't do it. <laughs> um, Rune Forge isn't really that great for him. But, you know, if they do have a lot of healing on their team and you're a, you know, assassin, picking up brawlers isn't a bad idea. You know. Uh, oops. I'm not item. The leap will uh, proc it. This will proc it. You know. Um, I don't think it's too will proc it. Um, but, do, 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 you could also go into something like an Ickville, right? 
Um, in the team fights, again, you just howl. Boom, 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 boom. So, you know, 319 to swing. Uh, picking up something like a stone cutting wouldn't be a bad idea at all. Um, I, I, as Fenner, um, in general, unless you're like adapting, <laughs> you know, adapting tends to go for more of a, um, here, I'll just build a, whoops, where's it at? Um, adapting tends to be more of a really high damage assassin. And he is a really good Fenrir player. So he builds something around this, not exactly this, but, you know, uh, probably not this at all, but <laughs> he builds mostly damage on Fenrir. Um, so he just leaps in, you know. And he really fucking shreds their back line, right? And again, if I have full runes and I howl, that's 506 on the hit. Like, <laughs> 506 on the post hit because the Hydra's. And I have my buff for my one, or, or my two, you know. And that's not even with any executioner stacks or stone cutting stacks. Um, anyway. With Fenner, you know, you can build this sort of build, but you do have to be careful because, you know, you cannot be the engaged then. <laughs> you really can't. You know, uh, with the way I play Fenner, and the way a uh, assassin plays Fenrir is very different, right? So, if you're going to build this type of build where you really don't have any defense in it at all, you can't leap in first. <laughs> They're going to kill you. You know, um, you can like howl and then hit and then, you know, use your brutalize. But, you know, they're going to obliterate you. They're just going to dump all this shit onto you and you're going to die. You're going to get CC'd and you're going to die. Because Brutalize is really easy to cancel out. <laughs> um, so you really need somebody else to leap in first. You know, somebody like a Bacchus or somebody else to leap in first. And then come in from, you know, out of nowhere and just leap in, do a bunch of damage, you know. Oh shit. <laughs> we just found out there's a Fenrir behind us and our entire team is dead. And that's how adapting, if you watch adapting play, that's how he plays. He waits for his, uh, he waits for, you know, somebody else to engage, like Demi to, to come in and, you know, ult in his tier or whatever, right? And, you know, he waits for him to engage, and then, you know, adapting just comes in the back line and just, like, cleans house, you know? He just destroys your squishies, you know? And... Next thing you know, the support and the <laughs> the soul are just standing there like, well, all of our carries are dead. <laughs> and adapting's like, yep, you're next. Like, so this build can wreak havoc, but um uh, with do 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 the way I play him. Uh eh, it doesn't really matter. So the way I play Fenner is I leap in first. <laughs> I jump in, I stun, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, pick somebody else, take them over to my carries, you know. And with me leaping in first, they see, ooh, squishy Fenrir, like, and they don't realize it's going to take them forever to kill me. Um, also, this game sucks, like, <laughs> come on, man. Um, yeah, hold up. Let me fix things. So, yeah, you know, they see... Oh man, a squishy assassin just jumped in. But, you know, with this build, I'm really fucking tanky, so it's going to take a while to take me down. So, it gives me enough time to, you know, stun, disrupt, lay down a whole bunch of damage, and, you know, pick somebody up and really displace them out of the team. Right? So, you know, um, this is honestly one of my favorite characters to play in the solo lane, just because of the fact that, you know, his team fight is great. His soloing pressure is great, but, you know, if you really don't have anybody to burn the bees, you don't have a Hunvats, you don't have, like, a Kumba, a Athena, you know, something to force them to burn their beads, then there's not a whole lot you're going to get done, because you're going to end up leaping in on a mage, you know, stun, you're going to pick them up, and then they're just going to immediately drop, like, 
Um, there's one other thing I want to talk about. Can't remember what it was. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, um, pretty much if you if you're using the more assassin build, when you use Ragnarok is going to be very different because uh, if you do have full runes, you will get a lot more protections off of Ragnarok. Um, but it's still gonna you're you're not gonna get like a billion protections, you know. You'll get a good bit, right? So, yeah. Again, you check, I'm at like 179, 168. I go here, I get like full. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're, you're still going to get brought down pretty quickly because you won't have a giant health pool to back all your protections. Um, and also, they're going to see, ooh, big dog, you know. Clifford ran down the street. Just kill him. Like, you know, he has our friend. Ah. <laughs> you know, so once you pretty much pick somebody up, you kind of become a priority target because they want to, you know, bring you down as fast as possible. Um, so I think that's about it for Fenrir. Um,. Again, most people just leap, stun, auto attack, stun. Just a lot of auto attack canceling with this character. Most of the time you just want to hold down left click. <laughs> but, you know, you leap in, you stun, auto attack, howl, auto attack, and then brutalize. Auto attack. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is the... Probably the highest DPS combo. Um, not including the ultimate, anyway. But again, it, you know, Fenner, it's very situational on who you play against. Man, I was going to try and not repeat myself that much this time. But yeah, I um, think that's about it for Fenner. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys later.